Hey, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop. How's everybody doing today or tonight or whatever you're listening to? Uh, awesome. Our guest tonight is Harlan Hogan. Hey, Harlan. Hey, how you doing? Pretty it's good. Okay, you missed my birthday. That's all right. The present can come in a couple of days. Don't worry. Uh, when was uh, that? It was on Saturday. Oh, see, we're not Facebook friends. How would I know? We're we're we're, <laughs> we're Libra buddies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mine's in That's right. Actually, somebody pointed out once that uh, if you were born on September 30th, then you were a New Year's Eve baby. Just uh, give it some thought. <laughs> <laughs> Just do the math. <laughs> yeah, really, really. All righty. Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. George and I are going to talk with Harlan. If you got any questions for him, throw them in the chat room because we will get to those questions on voiceover body shop starting right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard, as it says right there. And I'm George the Tech Widom. <laughs> and this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Well, did I show this last week? I think we've seen it in a few formats. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> found it, found it in, in Leadville, Colorado. Of all places. Prince Albert has multiple, uh, connotations. I recommend Googling it sometime. Yes, exactly. But the old joke was, is you got, you have Prince Albert in a can, let him out. <laughs> anyway, tonight we have a very special guest. Somebody who's been with us before and is actually with us every week. If you watch this show every week, that's right. Joining us from from Chicago is Harlan Hogan. But let me introduce Harlan. Harlan has provided the voiceovers for countless commercials, documentaries, and films. Many famous advertising catchphrases such as, strong enough for a man, uh, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, when you care enough to send the very best, and Quaker Life, it's the serial even Mikey likes, ranked 10th, 10th, in TV Guide's list of best commercials uh, have been per performed by Harlan. He's also written several books on the subject of voice acting, and his company, VoiceOver Essentials, is the only outlet for voiceover recording equipment made for voice actors by a voice actor. And he was recently interviewed by Chicago Magazine uh, in an article entitled, Everybody's Got, Everybody Tells Me I Have a Great Voice. And we want to talk about that right now. Welcome, Harlan Hogan. Thank you. <laughs> Good to have you. You're not going to say legendary, are you? Because I, did I not... feel like I'm going to die the next day. You know? No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's Mark Rouse private property, I think. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> you know, Good people guy. tell me all the time I have a great voice. Guess who's not trying to do voiceover? <laughs> yeah, you know, me. You, you don't want yeah. you don't want to uh, compete uh, with your own clients. No, I don't. No, I yeah. don't. Anyway, so you know. You could have just sent me the link, but no, Harlan sends me the entire magazine. And, uh, there's this, this great article, uh, for Chicago magazine about everyone tells me I have a great voice. You know, sometimes I tell people, you know, I do voice of, well, you got a really good voice. I'm like, it's not about the voice, but, uh, how did, uh, how did you come about uh, doing that particular interview? It was a very long article. It is a very long article, well written, I think, and covers a lot of territory. Just out of nowhere, I, I did not know tell before this, he just sent me an email and said, I'm kind of putting this thing together, and I've heard your name a lot. Could we do a Zoom together? I said, yeah, sure. So we did. And then I went off to L.A. to do some stuff for the uh, Magic Castle. 
And uh, if you're good, I'll send you the picture of me in my black tie outfit. It's stunning. And uh, <laughs> it's one of those you think, thank heavens I have a tuxedo. And now I can justify the three times I've worn it in a decade. But anyway, he got a hold of me. He said, you know what? He had mentioned a golden age back in the day in the 70s and 80s. And the editor said, well, get some more on that. So he came out to the house, saw the studio, and we hung around together. He's a terrific guy. And I think his journey is very interesting and very honest as he's taking classes from the really good people here and uh, trying to get his first agent. And like almost all of us, the first go round on the agent is probably not the one you're going to get signed on. But you'll stay at it and talk to them and promote. And that was one of those out of nowhere things. Hmm. Well, it was it was interesting. What what I found, it sounded like everybody's success story. Now, you started doing this at a very different time in this business. I mean, both right. of us did. Our, right. our our backgrounds are very similar. We did the radio thing, and you know, and that that helped. You know, some people get into into voiceover, but uh, but what we saw was hardly something that I think most people see in their careers. You know, there was successful people, and the ratio was probably not that good. What do you what do you think? And based on what what we were reading, no, it's a it was a small club. I mean. There was so much, particularly commercials and, and also corporate narration and some on camera. Chicago has a checkered past on shooting things here. It's much, much, much better now than it was. But for years, uh, the mayors would say things like, "We, you can shoot here, but we need to approve the script. Well, you say that to a writer. You know, <laughs> there's, we'll go shit it in Philadelphia, see you around. <laughs> but the commercial business was really going rocking and rolling and and there was a lot of work. And some of that also was the ad agencies, the way that they operated, which was kind of unusual because I had done a little time in advertising as well. And Leo Burnett in particular would set up teams when they got a new account and they would put together this whole package in competition with each other. And then he would sit and look at all the storyboards and the pencil tests and all that and judge them. And famous for saying this, this one. This one gives me an idea, and he'd throw it down. <laughs> but for the voiceover people, and me being a newbie, they would generally get the pros or even the amateurs in to... Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes, and... Oh, we didn't Hi. want him to interrupt. All right, where's the yeah, razor you know, blade? We that one. Without That's an okay, I know. I know the 17th. He's a good guy. But anyway, you know even not even knowing anything, they'd say, uh, hey, could you be over here at one o'clock at uh, Universal? And we've got six scratch tracks, which paid 150 bucks, which was 50% of a session fee. Hey, and the beauty of that was you were actually getting directed by writers and producers who, if they liked you, would say, hey, let's get that guy back. So it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful time. And if you were smart, you realized it wouldn't go on forever, <laughs> but it it was good. Yeah. Well, it's it's really changed, you know, with so many people in the biz. What is it yeah. in your mind that allows people to succeed in this business? A lot of work, promotion, treating it as a business, even when you get the audition and you look at it and laugh because you think it's stupid, send it back. The person who sent it, that's a courtesy. And there's a lot of floppiness in it, I think. And... um if you can find, a, well, this is classic, if you can find in Chicago a niche, but if you find a niche like the rest of the world, something you can specialize in, and that, that may be phone answering, it may be medical narrations, it, it could be any number of things. That really helps, I think, your psyche. I do a lot now at my age, a lot of political work, and they're very loyal. I enjoy doing it. During the season, you, I mean, it is not unusual here to have calls at three in the morning because the lawyers got a hold of it. And we said that so-and-so did something. We got to change two words. <laughs> he was he was possibly, oh, okay, I can do that. Hang on. Happy to do it. Call any time. So I found that to be good. And I think also just, you know, 
longevity is important. You start to see, I think, a long-term career, not just something you get luck, you luck into. And a lot, and you're right. A lot of the stories are that we luck into it. So part of it is also showing up. I forget whose quote that was, but that was like ninety percent of success is showing up. Mm. <laughs> so, Repeatedly, there, there are so many people though. Yeah. 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 Do do what you say you're going to do, which is, you know, and, and deliver when the opportunity comes, which is, I think that's, that's the, the one thing, you know, somebody says, well, I was doing, I was in theater and somebody said, Hey, try this. And because they were actors, they were able to pull it off immediately. And, Mm -hmm. you know, but I guess people, the really good people continue to study and, and, try to keep up with the trends and stuff. What have, what have you been seeing? When, yeah, I mean, you're, I'm sure you're talking to a lot of voiceover people in your, in your business. And uh, what, what are you seeing as far as, you know, what people are doing to try and keep up? Well, pretty much what we're talking about and staying, staying in there and, and you got to have a thick skin. It, it, it is difficult. Um, Rejection is going to come over and over and over and over and over again. And just get used to it. But go back and listen to that audition, for example, and see if you can hear something you didn't do or you might want to try next time. And I'm, I'm huge on looking at scripts. It's part of my theater background. I could be a fan in theater, and I worked in radio as well as Dan did, and, and did tons of community theater. I can't begin to tell you. And dinner theater. That was that was a joy. <laughs> it doesn't pay a lot, but you got free dinner, you know? Been there, done that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was in the odd couple in both roles, Felix and Oscar. Go figure. Not at the same time. But, oh, yeah. You know, I was going to totally, say. Totally different bodies. But um, keeping working, keeping doing it. And look, look at that script, unless it's just totally like it would be an AI script, like number one, number two, number three. But look, what's the storyline here? What are we trying to do? And if it's decent writing, there there is a story in there. And mm-hmm. I don't think it's about how you have a good voice. I I never ever thought I had a you know a good what is a good voice to a big deep voice and all of those things. But that's not the point. And it was back in maybe the early fifties or late forties. I mean, you know, you had the, the hand over the ear and ladies, have you looked at your laundry? Well, we did. Stop it. <laughs> Who are you talking to? And when I was first getting in the business, there were still a few people like that. And they would go in and you know, take the cans off and talk to themselves. Now, if somebody does that, to? they're doing it because they're basically playing a character of that yes. style of reading. Of that genre. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Back in the day. That, that's about the only time anybody wants that kind of delivery. And it can be very funny. Yeah. And the fact is, too, just take time with copy, take a break, take a breath. That's all part of one of the things that will hopefully keep the AI kind of robotic voice away. Like, Mm -hmm. like the musicians say when they had the, all of the the, the electronic musical instruments, the problem was there were no clams. For those of you who are not musically oriented, there were no mistakes. It was too perfect. Yeah. And in Chicago in particular, we have wonderful jingle singers. I mean, God, they've been the best in the world. And everybody, they, they, had, drum, to be. Drum, they, they had to be, had to be. super oh. incredibly impressive musicians because oh. if you botched God. a take, I mean, there was no punching in, there was no moldy track, man. It was like a one shot cool. deal. And yep. so the musicianship yep. was like absolutely next level. Yeah. 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 And even doing voiceover, go to Universal and it was on an optical track and you read the script, the whole script and got it in on time. Not that that's any pressure. (laughs) And when you did screw up and your mind went nuts, they had, you know, they had to roll it back. So you'd be standing in this little booth and you just, no, no, Harlan, no, 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 no. You you, you, you plugged it. Okay. Okay. Thing rolled back. Meanwhile, your your whole world, your whole career is passing before your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but you get, you learn how to do it, and sometimes yep. even you know cur- even do a little ADR on it. Yeah. And uh, it was fun. The thing that always cracked me up in the bigger studios here, Universal and 
CRC and Studio One. When you work there, this huge, beautiful room with fabulous speakers and everything, and you go, wow, this is great. And you got the singers doing Like a Good Neighbor, State Farm, mm-hmm. and this beautiful, beautiful music going out, and the, all the McDonald's stuff. And then you go home at the time and had your TV on, and it had one of those little oval speakers about this big. So the thing that sounded so great when you recorded it sounded kind of like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you had to kind of say, believe me, it was really good when we recorded it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, we're talking with Harlan Hogan, if you're just joining us, and we're talking about what's going on in the voiceover business, reminiscing a little bit here, but let's let's get into what's going on today, because uh, there's I heard the lot. word... I heard the the letters AI in that last conversation. So. Yeah, well, we'll we'll get to that. But there's there's all sorts of stuff. But you know, we've got so many people in this business right now. Uh, but we also have a lot of coaches. Uh, it seems like if somebody can't make a living, they become a voiceover coach. I mean, it's it, it it's very difficult to make a living doing that doing this these days unless you're an established talent breaking in can be pretty tough and i just want to remind everybody if you have a question for harlan throw it in the chat room cuz jeff uh, jeff holman's sitting there he looks very lonely and he will take the uh, he will take those questions and get us to uh, get it to us in a second mm-hmm. see not now gave me gave you a chance to think about your answer there harlan so with all these coaches out there. I know, I know, I know. And I'm not saying that they're all bad, but there's an awful lot of people, you know, with the, it, it, it's the get rich quick scheme or, oh, come study and uh, we'll do Zen. And, and when you, the thing in, in the article that I disagree with is, oh, you really should be taking improv classes because you're going to be doing commercials and you're going to be improv Trust me, when you've got 27 seconds to get something done, you're not improvising anything. And I think that's a false, a false idea. Yeah. Uh, perfect on stage. It makes sense. In fact, actually, at one time when Second City here in Chicago and Saturday Night Live was coming on and we had John Belushi and all, all these wonderful people were coming in. My wife at the time was a very, very, very respected and very good voiceover talent agent. She found out that some of the ad agencies were hiring the people from Second City. When they'd get there, there was no script. They'd say, yeah, we're going to be selling this deodorant. What do you guys think? And several of them would come back and say, Leslie, do we, what are we going to do? And she, she went to the union and, and straightened them out and said, uh-uh, we know what you're doing. So there's an improv fee. So they would get something like triple if they did improvisation, but there's, there's just things out there. I saw this quote and I'm not, and I'm not saying everybody is this, but it was from a financial guy. And I thought it was kind of interesting in terms of being coached or taught something Said you may notice there are so many gurus out there. Everyone is a guru. Why are they calling themselves gurus? I'll tell you why, because it's too difficult to pronounce and spell charlatan <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm sure one. in the financial world that's got to be a lot of it <laughs> very, very much so yeah. yeah yeah i mean i mean when someone's looking for a coach i mean gotta look and see who are their clients who, who are their students how yeah. have they succeeded um mm-hmm. you know what was this person's record they did one one spot, one national flight spot, and suddenly they're they're an expert, or as you said, a guru. Um, how do you find a good coach? I mean, are, do you still take any coaching? No. No. <laughs> okay. Well, forget that then. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, from my wife, yeah, of course. But that's of course. Different. Well, that's that goes with that. No, I don't. But I mean, I would. I did early on, but there weren't there weren't that many in Chicago. There were plenty in New York who were doing coaching, but hardly anyone. And you basically went and you got a little job or a little demo, and you learned from all these wonderful talents around you what works and what doesn't work because you're actually performing. But. I'm kind of in, you know, on, on both sides of that, you can certainly have someone who works with you on, let's say, your demo, who really knows what they're doing. That makes a lot of sense. 
But I do think you got to do a lot of research because if I read, believed everything that I see in my mailbox every single day, and I do have it there because some of, many of those people come to voiceover essentials. So I want to see what, what are they being taught? I just saw a new one and I won't even, I don't want to go too close on it, but it was so vague that I had to read it four times to figure out what it was she was selling in this particular course. Yeah. And I, is this just me? So I sent it to a couple of other people around, you know, who've been around a long time. They said, I have no idea what she's talking about. What does this have to do with voiceover? It was kind of a Zen kind of thing. You'll get in this mood and you'll read better, like showing up, read the words clear. That's your job. If you want a good book on acting, get David Mamet's book. It's the only one that I think has any accuracy in it. Rather than all this stuff, and you're going to to get a background and find out, what was I doing before I walked in the room? Man, it says, here's the script. Your job is delivered in a free, in a very clear voice. No cute voices. Just read the words that I wrote. The meaning is all in the words that are written. And he's right. Mm -hmm. If it's well written, it's there. You don't have to nudge it and laugh and turn it into something that isn't, isn't accurate. Now, he's basically talking about theater actors, but it's a heck of a book to read. Boy, he really is a good writer. Surprise. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Once again, we're talking with Harlan Hogan. If you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room, whether you're on Facebook Live or on Mm -hmm. YouTube or watching on our our website. Uh, We want to hear your questions, too, because Harlan just loves answering questions from all sorts of people because... He runs a business that it's all about voiceover, isn't it? Um, you know, yeah, equ- it is. equipment has really changed the equation somewhat. Why we see so many people out there, you know, trying to get into voiceover, you know, easier access to technically being able to compete has become a lot easier. What prompted you to start voiceover essentials? Desperation. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, 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 kidding. Um, well, it, the, the story is such a bad joke, and I have made it, but for a long time, I think, hey, you know what? I've been doing this for four decades, 44 actually years, and I've never had to have a retail job. So I started the store so I could have a retail job. I mean, I mean, that's what <laughs> actors do, right? <laughs> yeah. But the store came about because of a need I had, which was to record in hotel rooms and less than wonderful acoustic things. And that was coming out of doing the political jobs. When we're doing that during the season, I mean, I've done a couple hundred in a season. You're just knocking them off, knocking them off, and then they change them the next day. And it's good work but you know for example jeff and i who wrote some books about home studios you know we're out in las vegas at at the national association of broadcasters speaking in fact i think we rode in your car that one time george when we went over to have dinner with jeff fisher and me and you and i I took i took took you to a great restaurant and big beautiful steaks that's when i discovered you're vegetarian (laughs) (laughs) no i'm I'm not vegetarian I, I'm pestitarian. Aha! T E S T. That's very funny. <laughs> but I started working on some way to do it beyond just building pillow forts because that's what we used to do. You know, when it was pillows or hide mount or wherever to try to get the glass down. Of course, there everybody wants to see the strip, so you've got miles of glass, right? And talk about a base trap. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But that's what I started playing around with it and making some things out of foam core and this and that, and putting acoustic mm-hmm. stuff in. I just put it out because we had written two books. Um, just put it on the internet and said, okay, here's a way you can record on the road on the cheap. And that was basically taking this little laundry thing that I'd found at Target for about seven bucks and did caution them to buy real acoustic foam. There's there's another area where you see people. Oh, boy. There's so much crap. Oh, my God. Amazon. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And they just lie. Those guys just lie. Yeah. So I I got it and I 
wrote a little article. I taught him how to cut foam because you can't cut it with the scissors because it compresses. Yeah. And just set it out there. And I'm, people kept writing me saying, oh, I made one of these. That's I, actually, one time on, early on, on, when I first started making them, this woman complained because she had made a porta boot and she didn't use, and she flat out said, I used a cardboard box and a such and such, and, I, and it just doesn't work well. I give it no stars. Well, duh. <laughs> you know, are you nuts? But that they're out there. But then it kept getting people saying, well, could, you know, could I buy one of these things? One of the things was a big sheet of Oralex or what's the other one that's really good? Oralex is my, my favorite. X, maybe. But yeah. Um, you know, four by eight sheet, you, you'd have to get about five friends together and then make these panels and oh, put them yeah. in there. Yeah. So eventually you think, you know, dummy, these people are asking about these. Well, maybe, maybe I'll make some. So I did. I made 10 of them and priced them at like 75 bucks. I didn't know what I'm going to was. And I cut the foam, put it together in the basement. They'd sold out immediately. <laughs> and so I started making them here. So in addition to doing voiceover and everything else, I was manufacturing them here. And then little by little, they got you know, more sophisticated. I found a company who could build the pros are beautifully, you know, the workmanship on it is fabulous. And so once I had that, it was like, well, we got to put it on, on the internet. I'm going to go to Amazon, of course, and eBay, and Walmart. And so we just there, I started looking. There's the, there's the dogs. Um, there's that. That's Leslie. Thank you. <laughs> there's nothing we can do about it. Just sit tight. Um, but I started looking at a lot of the stuff out there. And there they are. Hey, Jack. Hey, it's mom. <laughs> You know, everybody tells him he has a good bark. You know, <laughs> every single if he's got a great bark. He does. Very good. Get that but dog a job. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that did occur to me when I was kind of thinking about getting that product into something like BSW or B&H or whatever, you know, and I started looking at the catalogs and the amount of stuff. How, no wonder the first three questions are what microphone should I buy? You know, can I get an agent? Uh, you know, like. You have a hundred different microphones and they all sound great on piano and drums and vocal. No, they don't. That's when I started talking to MXL about it and developing the VO1A, which they did a fabulous job on, which Dan is pointing to. It's a great mic and we've kept the price under 400 bucks, you know, despite inflation. And I'm very proud of that and the way they built it. And you always gave us a great review on it. And, uh, well, then you kind of go, well, well, what else could somebody use? And the sign came along, and then the cans came along, they had headphones. But I've kept it now. We still only have about 12 items in any one time. I, I don't need to have two or three things. And hopefully someone who's new and they, they know that they can trust me, and I'll buy that mic and I'll get these things, and, you know, we're in business. Well, you, it's, it's the problem-solving stuff that I tend to appreciate the most, you know? like the ABS, mm -hmm. the adjustable yeah. boom stop. I mean, that's a unique device that fix a, <laughs> fixes a real problem because so many people get boom stands at, at Banjo Emporium and they mm -hmm. don't hold the weight of a professional mic. Not by the right. least. They're, they're made to hold like a, an SM58. Well, this is a fake one. But... <laughs> It's a rubber They're chicken. made to hold one of these, <laughs> and that's about it. That's about the what they can muster, you know. And the uh, only you, thing worse would be that bar, that soap one that you can buy and sing in the shower. That that was really cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think if I cut the end of this off, it's sponge on the inside. That that might work. Um, but yeah, exactly. that that was a really clever solution to a problem, and I thought that was great. Um, and the. You know, it's just, yeah, it's great making a product that people ask for and then just exceeding their expectations and making it better and better. It's a really, uh, it's a really cool thing. And yeah, like you said, I'm not trying to sell a hundred things. You're just choosing, really hand choosing the right stuff people need. Yeah, you're right. And that, that, is, that is very rewarding. I mean, it really is. And uh, the thing I always looked at was not so much, you uh, know, some people want a dynamic, something 
we're used to cardio and condenser microphones. Well, what's better? It isn't really the question what's better. What does our client, particularly on an audition or a job, expect to hear? Mm -hmm. So if you go in there with a cheap, crappy mic and it sounds like hell, your odds are greatly reduced of not getting the job. Or if you have a decent mic, but it's just a completely wrong mic for the job, that can still really yeah. shoot in your foot. And you can spend a lot of money on a not right, not correct microphone uh, yeah. because there's a lot of mics out there for podcasting and yeah. they're not the same right. thing. Right. Yeah. I, I find yeah. a lot of people if are. If it's $39, it's not good. Let's just put that. Yeah, I, well, I'm even sorry, if it's $300, Dan. there's some not good microphones out there because yeah. they're not yeah. made for voiceover. Yeah. Don't buy right. stuff off Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the. Is yeah. the best thing to Facebook think about ads. with that. You know, but a lot of people keep buying these SM7Bs, and I'm like, why? Who is suggesting this? I'm hoping I got that out of the one catalog that uh, was promoting it heavily the last couple of years. I would every year I'd email some sales reps, say, can you get that mic? Can you take the word voiceover out of the description of this microphone, yeah, please? Really. Yes, please. It's not. It's not. But. You know, it is interesting, too, because at the time when I started the first thing past the, the Porta Boots was that nobody at that time had even in any of their ads, Sennheiser or whoever or Road or any of no one ever mentioned voiceover, ever. It's great for singing. It's great for stage. It's great for everything. And I thought, OK, I see I see a niche <laughs> here for a niche, but. Yeah, if I say, and we did design it. We softened the polar, um, and we put very really good JFETs in it and Mogami wire. The only place we didn't spend too much money is the outer tube because that would have cost a fortune to create. Mm -hmm. So it has its standard look. Sometimes people got confused and thought that the less expensive version, you know, looks like it. And, uh, but you got to know if that thing's seventy nine dollars and this one is three hundred and eighty nine, there certainly is a difference. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wake up! Absolutely. Yeah, this mic's got all the best, like you said, the best components. Yeah. Once again, yeah. we're talking with Harlan Hogan, and uh, if you have a question for him, we'd like to hear from you because you can go in the chat room and you can type out that question, and Jeff Holman will sit there and look at it and go, "Yeah, that's a good question," and pass it on to us. And we'll get to that in our next segment. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. I still got a couple of things that Harlan and I want to talk about. And we'll do that right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Show. Okay, there we go. Okay. This this is usually where we have our voiceover essential spot. So yeah. I figured I'd give Harlan the opportunity to to sell it himself because I'm doing it every week, but he's the man. And tell us why people should go to voiceover essentials. Is this live? Yes, it's live. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because we narrow it down to the really good stuff. If I've got my name on it, you know it's going to be good. And you know you can send it back if you don't like it. I think I'm still the only mic manufacturer anywhere that allows you to return a microphone. And I encourage them. We don't ask if it isn't for you, because every mic will sound different, right, Dan, on mm -hmm. different voices. And sometimes it doesn't work as well. Send it back. Because I've got a bunch, I have a bunch of things over here that I purchased and thought, oh, you know, it's okay, <laughs> but not great. Um, and also just you know, keep it keep it simple, and it, try to try to improve the product every time. We, we do have a, you know, each time. I've got a stand finally. It's developed. They've been delivered. It will hold your portable Pro or Plus. Beautifully made. Totally adjustable, eight pounds. And that'll be the next product that I put out because we've always needed it. We had a stand for a while, but it was so heavy. It was unbelievably heavy. It cost more to ship it than make it. Mm. And we sold them, but then, you know, now it, nowadays it sounds like a really old guy, but now, you know, UPS guy, whoever USPS gets it and then tries to, you know, 
not break it, mm-hmm. it breaks. <laughs> yeah. Did, now, you still offer free shipping? Oh, on that stand we did because we had we had to because otherwise we were charging more for shipping than the product itself. Right. But uh, we we no longer have it. It's just, it just was way too heavy, way too much warehousing and stuff. So this new one you could actually travel with in it. I had I, like I've always done. You take an existing product and find a way to make it better for voiceover, not for any other reason. So. Mm-hmm. What we needed on this product was more height. Did a lot of negotiating with the factory because if you ever go into the world of getting things from not necessarily just China but other countries, and you say, well, "What would it cost if I could take that product and do this, that, and the other?" and then you get a quote back and you say, "Hey, that's not bad. We can sell that very reasonably and make a little money on it." And then you realize there's this thing called an MOQ. Do you know what an MOQ is, Dan? I do not know what an MOQ is. You will now know. So you say, yeah, that, yeah, we, we get that thing and we can sell these. MOQ means minimum order quantity. Ah. So if you, yeah, so you say, oh, one of these, oh, that's going to be $29. In China in particular, it's very rare to have anything less than 1000 in the MOQ. Well, hey. I'm not that big, and I don't have a huge warehouse here. <laughs> We'd have to move out. It's tough. Yeah. You can't do. That's where, say, for example, MXL was so great because they could say, okay, Harlan, we'll give you an MOQ of 100 of these and see how you do. Mm-hmm. That I could hand. All righty. Go on over to voiceoveressentials.com because this guy says you should, and I say you should. <laughs> well, we'll be right back. George has to talk to you about Source Connect. Right, George? You got it. Should we go straight to it? Why not? No bumper needed. So Source Connect, another one of our sponsors, the parent company, being Source Elements, actually. And what's funny is we're keeping it in Chicago tonight because one of the founders of Source Elements, Robert Marshall, is also in the Chicago area. So uh, how about that for regionalism? for our show but source elements is um a very very well thought out product because it their their source connect product particularly is something that is been honed and improved and fine-tuned to be the perfect way to connect studios between each other and still maintain the highest of audio quality there's no drifting of sync if there are any sound dropouts, it has a built-in tool set called Q Manager, which will replace any dropped out audio automatically in the producer's session. It's incredible. And it's actually surprising how few producers bother to use this function because it does work so well most of the time. But with Q Manager, it takes care of concern about dropouts and audio when you've got your kids playing a video game while you're trying to record or who knows what there could be anything between you and the studio halfway around the world that could cause issues. So the system backs that up for you automatically. It can even with Q manager replace whole audio tracks from the compressed data audio file. That's basically AAC with a completely undata compressed wave file and just do this automatically completely in the background after the session. So it's really amazing tool and it's integrated so well for producers that it's the reason you as actors should have it. So go to source-elements.com, get a 15 day free trial and ask them for support because their support is fantastic. I'm telling you. So thanks again for your support source elements and let's go on to the rest of the show. Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a very simple tool, drag and drop tool, that would guarantee that the audio you need to upload to ACX or any other audiobook platform is perfectly set up in terms of the tech standards, the root mean square normalization, the peak normalization, the noise floor? Guess what? There is. And I want you to have it absolutely free. It's called Audio Cupcake. And you can find it at audiocupcake.com. I helped create this software. 
It was built to my specs and my standards for when I do audiobooks, and I know it's going to work for you. Now, it's only available for Macintosh uh, because you Windows users, you have the ability to use other tools that work for you. But in this case, you edit your final raw WAV file for a chapter, you drop it onto Audio Cupcake, and out comes the 192K mono MP3 file you can upload immediately. That's audiocupcake.com. Audiocupcake.com. I hope you love it. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. And we're back with Harlan Hogan. Uh, again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. We have room for a couple of questions here. Uh, George, you want to take that first one from Justin Ramos? Happy to do it. All right, Justin, thanks for your question. He came in on YouTube. And the question is, what is an improv fee? And does it still exist and or apply to voice acting? Is it only for union jobs? My understanding is you can do a bit of improv for an audition, but charging the client for that? I've never heard of this. Does this, I've never does this heard ring that's, a bell to anybody else? Me. No, not you either, Harlan? No, 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 no not audition. And as I said, you know, for a while their producers here were taking advantage of the Second City people, but that's gone. That's a job. You're going to get paid because you're basically writing the script. I wonder right. if he meant an audition fee versus an improv fee. Yeah, that, but yeah, even it's then, been proposed that's... a lot of a lot of times over over the negotiations that you know I've been involved with from time to time with mm -hmm. the union trying to give back a little bit, and I do believe in the UK that you get paid for an audition. I could be mm -hmm. wrong on that, but I think they do. And yeah, mm -hmm. you can see some. Well, particularly if you're auditioning and working out in LA and you can't even park the car. I love when they have a sign that says "No auditions" because you can't <laughs> yeah. park there. Yeah, yes. thank you. And uh, you know, yeah. and, and if you if you got to go from William Morris and you want to go, some, it's like three hours. When I was just out there, I came back and said, "I I finally figured out the traffic in Los Angeles. It consists of standing still or going a hundred miles an hour. That's it. There's nothing in between. That's how they drive. <laughs> it's something in rap, rapid succession. Yeah, yeah. You have to have a lot of patience to drive here, which I have oh, oodles God. of. I don't know about you, George, but you know, it's you're on the highway more than I am. But downtown, yeah, finding a place to park almost impossible. And because of that, we should charge a fee for that. But you know, at least give us a quarter for the meter. Something, yeah. Gotcha. They gotcha. do have uh, in in the contracts if you are at a cattle call, basically, and there is I forget the exact amount of time you can be sitting there waiting to go in an audition. And if they keep you too long, then they have to pay you. Oh, okay. So, and that's been there for decades. I don't know how many people enforce it. I mean, generally, I don't think I've ever enforced it because usually you're there with your friends that you haven't seen in a while. And we're all going to go have a beer 10 minutes from now. Yeah. So yeah, I can sit here, well, yes. but you can see the logic of it. If you had a session coming up, you Sue, better get paid for this. Sue mentioned something about second city at some time, actually paying something called an improv fee because you're basically writing the ad for them? Is that Was that a thing? Or that's probably long gone, right? Uh, I think it's still in the contract. And I know I was so proud of my wife for going to the, to the union and saying, hey, no, 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 this is not right. You know, I can't send this talent over there and ask them to write your scripts. I haven't looked at the contracts in a long time, but I mm -hmm. think it's in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it should be. I mean, yeah. that makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we talk about doing improv, you know, taking a class here and there, so we keep ourselves a little sharper when we when we get a script, because you just want to do something different sometimes when you're doing an audition. Yeah. Uh, Ellen Conqueron, Ellen Cochran asks, and she's on YouTube. Hi, Harlan, I am loving your experience. How did you handle the evolution of technology as you were doing voiceover? Very well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have really I've given a lot of thought to this with, with a smile. But when I look at my age now and, you know, I always was interested in sound. My grandparents lived in the 
little apartment and they had you know a little tube that you push the button and you say hi grandma hi even then and my mom was a dancer so she had a record player and she taught dance in the basement to kids who wanted to learn how to dance so there were always records around there's always sound around i would get in trouble all the time listening to radio stations you know with a flashlight reading and listening you know what a crystal set is? My dad mm-hmm. and I built one of those. You look it up, you'll see. It's an it's amazing thing that you can build with a kid. They still make them, I think. Didn't you like attach and it you, to the radiator in your house or something like that? You needed a ground. Yeah, you had yeah. the ground, ground and, you, and you've got this little crystal, a thing called a whisker. Whisker, a yeah. Whisker. And you do that as you move. It is magical. You move it like, hey, you get something out of St. Louis. It's a 500,000 watt radio station. So I was always, my dad would come up, you know, he was a steel worker, so he was a little more <laughs> straighter than my mom and I. I'd be like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, I'm just going to bed, Dad. Go to bed. Okay. <laughs> you know, but I was always on the radio. Then my sister, who's five years older, she, you know, by then was 45, so we're coming out and you're listening to all the disc jockeys on, you know, which record's climbing, which one's going down. And I remember when stereo came out. That was a big deal. Disney did a thing on television and what they had they did and i love that show when walt disney hosted it you guys are too young but he the hosted wonderful the world of Sunday. color Sunday. I, yeah that's right that was the name of it yeah so they said you know hey next time get your radio that you have which everybody did we had this kind of orange motorola thing but you know it's mono get that and put that X feet away from your television set and you'll experience stereo. And that's the first time they ever heard, you know, it's classic. Here comes the train. <laughs> and then my dad knew somebody that had a yeah, record player. Then I was in junior high school and uh, our teacher, Mr. Jones, had an Ampex 601 tape recorder. And that was a serious tape recorder with a shiny silver microphone. And he kept us in line doing old radio shows, which I love doing. I think there's so much fun. So all of a sudden, I wanted a tape recorder. And, you know, graduating from junior high to go to high school, hey, they were like $75. It was not $75 for recording machines. But I did get a, a Wilcox Gay uh, Recordio, one of the worst <laughs> recording devices ever. I did read that Johnny Cash had one, too, so I felt better. You know, crappy little microphone, but I loved that tape recorder. And then I started recording other people more than myself. I didn't even look at performing that way. And then all the high school plays and all of that stuff. And then there was paper tape and wire. I have a wire recorder here that actually works from the 40s. Yeah. Really well, fun the, to turn it and on. this thing, thing and weighs so, a ton, too. Oh, God, yeah. You know how you, you, know how you, you fork it if you've got a... Um, Got to make a splice, you tie a knot in the, in the wire. <laughs> and it kind of flops past the head. And then all of a no sudden, way. you know, we've got records, we've got all this stuff, and then CDs. And, of course, the cassette thing, because our demos were all on five-inch reels of tape and a little white box. Those of you who are younger, this thing it goes around and around and around. And so that's how you did your demo, and everybody wrote their name on the end. And when I got into the business because I, I, I wanted to be different, I wanted to get recognized, I had a little a label printed up, you know, in like fluorescent orange. It wasn't fancy, but, you know, Postal Instant Press was on Michigan Avenue. So I had them print this up, and it's an Arlen Hogan demo, volume one. I had a number of people say, why did you do that? What do you mean? No, no, we all write our name on the end, you know, with a felt pen. And then, oh, well, that's how it's done. Well, I'll tell you what, for long, I'll have my demos out in four color. And they laughed at me. And they didn't laugh for long because I did it. And promote, promote, promote. I'm a big fan of looking at Barnum. Barnum in particular, man, Pete Barnum has a, has a wonderful line. I want to kind of follow how interesting P.T. Barnum was and how even though we think of him as a humbug and all of that, but people then enjoyed it. They, they knew it wasn't a mermaid. They knew it wasn't whatever it was he was showing in his dime thing. But he always had this great quote. I've always remembered it. Without promotion, 
something terrible happens. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and, and that's how I've lived my life, man. You got to yeah. keep promoting. Yeah. Yeah. We've got one more question here from Linda Joyce Miner. Says Harlan, can There's I another use another one you? too? It's just not in there yet, but we'll oh, get okay. to it. Yeah. Uh, can I use your mic and the VO1A? Uh, for voiceover and for my studies in opera, which I use to improve my voice studies in voiceover. Can you use the this for singing opera? Sure, absolutely. Just get back a little bit <laughs> if you're really hitting those notes. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't put it on a bass drum. I wouldn't put it on a piano. But yeah, I think, in fact, uh, I don't remember her name right now, but she's very good operatic singer in Washington, D.C. that I know does use it. And she does voiceover. She's got a wonderful demo where she's talking to her husband. It's a little dialogue, which is nice. It's hard to get good dialogue. They're going to the opera and her husband doesn't want to go. You know, go but yeah, yeah, well, let's skip this one. And right in the middle of it, she says, oh, yeah? And she just bursts into this beautiful opera. I mean, she's really a wonderful singer. Pause. Okay, we'll go. And, you know, sometimes you can take that other skill and throw it in there. And I, I'd slip her demo for that. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's important to realize, like, if it's a good condenser mic for a voice, it's going to be a good condenser yeah. mic for a voice, whether it's speaking oh, yeah. Yeah. or singing, yeah. because, you know, it's an instrument. It, you have dynamic range. It's capturing the full uh, audible range of your human voice no matter what. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely uh, yeah. true. Here's one from a name that you might recognize. Um, this is from James R. Alberger. And he says, um, I'd love to hear your story about the session when the director said, your read was a bit burgundy, and he'd like it to be a bit more rosé. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, some, I mean, the descriptions, I kind of, you know, I'm selective on stuff. So if I get a script, even before I look at the script, if there's two pages of direction, I don't want to do this session. This is going to be bloopers <laughs> soap. I mean, if they have to take two pages to describe, we want someone young but also old. My favorite in the last couple of years was we want a Morgan Freeman type, but young and no ethnicity. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> they, they have an idea in their mind what they want to hear, but they forget they're talking to other humans. I just I would argue with you, but what I see is they don't know what it is they want. They tell you what it is that they don't totally. want. Right. And then, of course, you know, oh, well, yeah, I want to sound like uh, so-and-so or Adam Driver or whatever star is working this week. I'm old enough that I don't know most of those people anyway, so I don't bother. <laughs> you know? I mean, have you ever have I don't you ever seen your, somebody? You ever seen your own name on the direction saying <laughs> yes, so it sound a bit Hogan like, like yes, yes, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And did you uh, get the gig? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, when, that doesn't when, always when my wife before Leslie became my wife 34 years ago the 34 out of 100 isn't bad um, but she would get a call from time to time she would laugh about things hey hey hi Leslie yeah, we, want, we want a Harlan Hogan type and she would say well we represent Harlan Hogan hey I know that but you know, he's on too many things I just want someone like him she was always so hard for her not to laugh, like, well, <laughs> I'm his wife, but don't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But there's that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can get a client to actually not call you announcer anymore and you've got your name on it. I had a fast food fish place called uh, Skip, Skipper Buds, something like that, Skipper Buds. And worked on actually with uh, ISDN at that point with the organization in St. Louis. I'm on the motorcycle. I'm an, out on the East Coast riding around and I see one of the, oh, Captain D's, that was it. I, it. We don't have them in Chicago. So I stopped and was sweating like a pig, of course, but I took a photo of the Captain D's and then just sent it to the, the record, you know, recording studio. And I said, so even on vacation, Mr. Hogan thinks about nothing but Captain Deeds. 
they thought it was hysterical, so they sent the photo over to the Captain D's people. And, and they said, done. From mm-hmm. that day on, all the scripts said, Harlan, they now knew my name. Hmm. Wow. Hey, man, know. this is, this is yeah, rather than an announcer, Harlan. Yeah. Hey, that, well, and yeah. pretty much a couple of years doing that gig because, you know, we, we, they can't get rid of Harlan. What are they going to do? Yeah. Well, Harlan. <laughs> Your name is well known out there, and we really, really appreciate you coming on tonight and telling us your stories and 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 making the stuff that you make. So keep doing that. I will. All righty. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being with us tonight. All right, we'll be right back yeah, to wrap you. things up and and mm-hmm. uh, re rack it for tech talk right after these messages. You're still watching VLBS. <laughs> Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Well, it's time to talk about a company that I have a very good relationship with because it was my idea. VoiceActor.com, VoiceActor.com, from VoiceActorWebsites.com. What is it? It is a templated website where you can make templated websites. Uh, Because as a voice actor, you have to have a website. And Joe Davis and the folks over at VoiceActor.com came up with all sorts of templates. And the great thing about a template is, it's just a template. You can put whatever pictures you want in there, whatever color scheme you want. But most importantly, and everybody forgets this when they're putting their voice actor website together, it's there's three things you got to have. Well, your name, your demos so they can hear what you sound like, and your contact information. What else do you need? You have to show them how artsy-fartsy you are with these things? No. Use a template. Make it quick. You can do it for free at voiceactor.com. And then if you like the site you have, it's $20 a month, and they have all sorts of other services, but you can get yourself up and running in half an hour, not six months. Go over to voiceactor.com right now. Tell them I sent you. We are the World Voices Organization, also Also known known as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, Our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with with the the chance chance to learn learn and and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We We speak speak for those who speak speak for for a living. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And it's time to say goodbye and then re rack it for Tech Talk. See, you folks that are watching the show live right now, you can stay around for Tech Talk and ask your questions and get them in. And so that's really important. Anyway, uh, thanks to Harlan Hogan for joining us tonight and all his stories. He's yep. always fun to talk to. Uh, next week on the show, you'll hear and see. Tech Talk number 111, which we're about one, to do. One, one. That's right. 
Uh, you've got discounts uh, for people, George? Yep, you can head over to georgethe.tech slash V-O-B-S. That's the landing page for the show, and you'll find our coupon code. Go check it out and see what we have to offer for you, and uh, take a look around. All righty. And thanks to our donors of the week. Let's see how fast we can do it. Greg Cooper. Grace Newton. Christopher Epperson. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Ant Land Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. It's Lee. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Borges. <laughs> Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. Maria Mackis. And Sandra Manwiller. Hey, you can donate to the show if you want to make. Want us to maintain the amazing technical quality, which is about to take a quantum leap, we hope. <laughs> Don't sell it too hard yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We're trying something new, but we'll, we'll see. We're how trying it something new soon, yeah. Yes. Uh, join our mailing list, too, because then you'll know who's going to be on. And just to go to our website, vobs.tv, and click on join our mailing list. Uh, need to thank our sponsors. Of course, our good friend Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActor.com. And? WorldVoices.org, where I am currently the president. So join up. We got lots of cool stuff for you. Uh, we need to thank, of course, Jeff Holman for doing all that great stuff. I am DB.me, Jeff Holman. Got to go there. Uh and, and doing all the work in the chat room and in Facebook and all that kind of stuff. H O L M A N. H O L M A N. J E F F. Right. right. And of both course, his first and last name could be spelled multiple ways. <laughs> good point. <laughs> uh, we also need to thank the one and only Sue Merlino for directing us and making it all work every week when we do this show. And of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. All right. We're going to re rock it and get ready for Tech Talk. If you have a question for us, throw it in the chat room. In the meantime, look, this isn't an easy business. Harlan will tell you, it's not an easy business. Hard to get into, hard to maintain a career at it, but we're here to give you the information you need to make sure that you're doing everything you can to make your sound really good. But we found that, really, if it sounds good... It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or VO... B.S. See you next time, kids.